new, uh, new, uh, new, uh. <laughs> new. It's new. It's new. Okay, we've got an update. The HDC, this was a 3021, NASA 3022. Totally code compatible, pin compatible, size compatible, everything. The only difference is now it has a PTFE filter. That's that white uh, thing on top of the sensor, which protects it. Um, it's the same price. Uh, we think it's just better quality because um, now the sensor isn't exposed to the elements, but it can still, it's, um, the membrane is still going to let humidity through. So it's a great humidity and temperature sensor and will uh, not get as dirty. Okay, next up, this is coming soon. Coming soon. Um, we, our friends at iFixit uh, designed a USB-C 100 watt um, portable soldering iron with replaceable tips and they really know what they're doing and what they're talking about and I love new designs. So um, it's coming soon. It doesn't come with a USB power supply. I do want to verify that, clarify that. You will need a 100 watt power supply, but here's the thing. If you're working and you have your laptop power supply anyways, now you can use it with yeah. your soldering iron. That's why we figured um, you're BYO, uh, B or P yeah. for this. So um, the other thing is on Hackaday, there's a cool article where they like logged into it and there's like, you know, a terminal. Yeah, so. it like runs like... There's it, cool stuff about it. Like a control so, interface yeah. or a serial port. So we'll have the soldering irons. I forgot how much they are, but um, they'll be in the It's station. like $75. Bucks. It's like, yeah, $75 or $79. Okay. But a really nice build. I mean, like, they're, yeah. they're the pros. And what type of tips does this use? It uses a, a plug-in tip, which there are going to be multiple variables, uh, variants available. Yeah. Um, it's shipping with, like, a kind of standard conical tip. But if you read the article, it's like there will be multiple tips available. Yeah. It's just they're launching with, like, one tip. But okay. they're replaceable. Next up, um, we have the Lana from Fix. Uh, this is, it's not a semi sorry, it's not a cutie pie board, although it's kind of similar shaped. It's their own layout, but it has a lot more pins. So like you see, it uses the same pin out as the Shao or cutie pie boards, but there's little pads in between. So if you need more mm. GPIO, that's available. And this is the CH32V, 302G6, I think. Um, very low cost, risk five by controller board uh, that has a couple of um, ways to program it. You can use make files and see with the CH003 fun project. There's Arduino support for this chip. We um, did TDUSB support. It's uh, very low cost. It's definitely fun. It's not for beginners, but if you really like this chip, uh, there's more GPIO than ever now uh, on the fixed board. Lana tiny. Okay. Lana tiny. Okay, next up, um, by request, uh, we've had a USB-C breakout, but folks were like, I want to go low. I want to go lower. Low this is a... Rider. It's a low rider. It's a, like, inset USB-C connector, um, which sits flush with the bottom of the PCB. I've seen this a lot in keyboard microcontroller boards. Mm. Um, but I thought we'd make a breakout for it just to test it out, and then maybe we will make, like, a cable. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. I like this. Yeah, it's basically like your standard USB-C, but it's just like, it's much slimmer. Yeah, okay. Next up. Next up, we have, okay, this I definitely have to show a demo because it's confusing. This is a double-sided, this is a double-sided LED strip. Um, I thought this was kind of neat because we have LED strips that have like two rows of side angle LEDs, but this one, the LED itself is side, uh, double-sided, so... Let me grab the strip. So let's go to the overhead and show it. This is extremely confusing. Yeah, I'm gonna wait until you're you're over there. Yeah, I'm over. Are you over there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So autofocus. So this, you see, it's a side lit neopixel strand, but the LED, it's like it, it has two sets of emitters. So if I remove this, and then I plug it in here, and I will drive it. Board, you'll see it emits out the front, and then you can actually sort of barely see here. Let me back it up. Um, maybe I'll wait till it's. Sorry. Oops. Oh. Okay. Okay. So I just stopped the data line. So it's lit from both. Wow, oh, it's so bright. I'm going to be able to 
find a spot where it's dimmer. I shouldn't just set the brightness is so bright. Um, it's too bright. Too bright, my eyes. Okay. Basically, it's so bright because the LEDs are, are double the brightness. They have emitters on both sides. Um, it also means they're much skinnier than the other double-sided, but this would be really good for edge lighting where you want um, to have a channel cut and then edge lighting from both sides. Um, and it's very slim. It's only like 10 millimeters wide instead of like the other one, which is like 15 millimeters wide. Okay. Very bright. And we also have, uh, you know, the other, other this one. This is... Um, the, another, it's it's this, a non right angle, it's vertical style. But what I like about this is that it's very high LED density. It's 100 LEDs per meter, and um, it's got like a diffusion silicone bead. It's not like 100% perfectly smooth, but it's way, way, way smoother than the um, LED strips. Whoa, Here it comes. It's bright. I know it's so bright. Um, it's much, much smoother than individual dots like from from close up you can oh, yeah. see like it's covered with this bead and each bead has an led every like i don't know five millimeters or so maybe seven millimeters um and this gives it like a very smooth glow it's kind of like the um led neon that we've stopped but instead of being um one color or in the RGB where you can set the color, it's like very smooth. So it's this, this is kind of the closest we've had to um, EL wire that's like fully addressable and slim enough that you could actually use in a build. Yeah. Um, without having the like the pixelated effect, it's like a smooth yeah. um, pulse of color. That's nice. Yeah. Okay, and the start of the show, besides you lead uh, our community, all these nice glowy things, I know, they're our so team. Glowy our customers, and everyone who shares things in the world to make it a better place to live in is... Da -da -da, a MEMS microphone, mm -hmm. which is by the code. Um, we had a, a few people email us and ask for us to carry another MEMS microphone. So this is an I2S output mic, which means you can connect it directly to microcontrollers or single board computers without drivers, without like special kernel things, without I squared C command writing without PDM decoding. It's a MEMS, you know, no need analog input. It just spits out like true I2S data when you uh, send it clock and left, right signal. Hook up two of them together and you can have stereo because one will uh, transmit on the left side, one on the right side. Um, it's the same pinout and shape as our SPH 34 something something 628. Um, but this is using TDK in Vincenzo's uh, ICS series of microphones, which people really like. Um, again, very high quality, very easy to use, and pretty inexpensive. If you just need like a microphone added to your, um, your ESP32 or Raspberry Pi and you don't want to have like a whole codec, this will do the job great. Test new products. New, 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 new.